so how how did uh, at what point was there like a moment where you realized that you were going to go down the training route as opposed to whether it be like the like for me I was a player until uh, sophomore year of high school <laughs> that was my kid peak point and then I was like all right I didn't make my sophomore team I'm going to go into broadcasting <laughs> Um, because that was the next best thing. But what was that sort of moment for you, and where did you find your passion on the training side? You know, it's crazy. I had always planned um, – my ultimate goal was to play professionally overseas. Like, every kid, I wanted to play in the NBA, but probably in, like, freshman year of high school, I, I realized that dream probably wasn't going to come true. Um, but I refocused my goal of I wanted to still play professionally and go experience different parts of the world. Um, which I was able to do uh, in Germany. And I always had a goal after that, or not a goal, but I just kind of had my life pattern set where I was going to go do mortgages. My family has a mortgage business in St. Louis. Um, my parents built back in the early 90s. And that was always my plan. All my siblings work there. I have three older siblings that work for my parents. That was just kind of how my life was going to go. And um, I was excited about it because sales, it's competition. But once I got done playing, I didn't even know I was finished playing, um, training started becoming really big, probably right around the time I decided to get into it. Um, you know, like even when I was in high school, we didn't necessarily have personal trainers or people we went to. Like my dad was my coach and I went and watched TV and then tried to copy Steve Nash, Darren Williams, Kobe Bryant moves on the driveway. That was training. So you know, fast forward to 2013, I was playing overseas. I, I started to do a little bit more in college of just individual training to make 20 bucks to pay for a case of beer on the weekend for me. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I came home from Germany and I started doing local group training and we had like 35 kids that were training for a couple months at a time. And then Two months later, it went all the way up to like 80 kids that wanted to train. So I was like, well, shit, I'm making great money doing this. And maybe I can, you know, people seem to enjoy the way I, I teach or train or help with whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. So I was like, well, maybe I can do this at a higher level. Maybe I can try to do this at the professional level because, you know, I had always planned to play overseas for four or five, six years to just get to see different parts of the world. But that quickly changed when I thought, okay, if I can start this now, I can probably try to get to the top a little bit quicker rather than wait to when I'm 30 years old and then try to get into the NBA training world. So um, I think I made the right choice, um, but it was a decision that I had to make. Totally. It, it, it's funny, like, and I've never contextualized it like, like that in regards to being able to get to the top quicker in the training game as opposed to the basketball game. But when you think about like how many all-stars there are in the NBA, and then you look at like the trainers, there aren't that many that, yeah. you know, I can name that you can name, um, you know, uh, so you're definitely, a, you know, an all first team trainer <laughs> <laughs> in <laughs> comparison. Hypothetical <laughs> list means a lot. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm sure. Uh, it would be better if you got the same bonus that, you know, came with being an all-NBA player.